Hey everyone. So I know that uh, too much ink has been spilled about Donald Trump already, but I'd just like to offer a few uh, thoughts about the Trump phenomenon. When uh, Trump was on the CNN show on Sunday, State of the Union, talking to Jake Tapper, uh, he protested his innocence with respect to the Megyn Kelly affair. Trump said to Tapper, Jake, who would say such a thing? I went to the Wharton School of Finance. I'm a smart guy. That's disgusting. Only a deviant would think I would say something like that. Who would say such a thing? Well, the obvious answer is, who would give a presidential announcement speech and suggest without any evidence that the Mexican government was deliberately sending us rapists and murderers? Who would say such a thing other than Donald Trump? Who would get up the next week and suggest that we should have less respect for veterans who were POWs than we should have for veterans who were never captured in battle? Because after all, POWs are kind of losers, aren't they? Who would suggest that other than Donald Trump? Who would get up at a campaign rally and deliberately give out the private cell phone number of a sitting senator for the sole purpose of subjecting him to harassment. Who would do that other than Donald Trump? And during the debate itself, when Megyn Kelly asked Trump, well, what about the fact that you've called women dogs and pigs and slobs and various other abusive terms? He could have actually, you know, if he had been sort of temperamentally balanced, he could have said to her, you know, Megyn, I've been an entertainer now on television for 20 years or so. I occasionally say things that are over the top. But here are the policies that I have that are really woman-friendly. And he could have ticked off whatever views he has that he feels are very supportive of women. But he didn't do that. Uh, he panicked. He denied he had ever said the things that she had quoted. He made a veiled threat to her while d the debate was going on. And it's clear to me that after the debate, he realized that he had flubbed the question. And that was what caused him to refer to her as a bimbo, a loser, and suggest that she had blood coming out of her wherever. I think he realized that he had so botched the question that he had to adopt this hyper offensive tone to, to kind of recapture his mojo. Well, it was a failure. And we all know that Donald Trump is a gaffe machine. The scary thing for me about it is that he defies the normal laws of politics with every gaffe his popularity among a certain set of Republicans gets stronger. And so that's the really uh, bizarre aspect of the Donald Trump phenomenon, that there is this 20% within the Republican Party. It's the same 20% that believes that the president was born in Kenya, uh, that believes that uh, the president is a Muslim, that believes that the president is trying to sabotage this country, uh, that thinks that evolution is a communist plot. These are the people who the Republican caucus, the Republican leaders, have been playing footsies with for the last six and a half years uh, by saying things like, gee, I don't know whether President Obama loves this country. I don't know whether he's a Christian. You'll have to ask him. He was brought up differently than the rest of us. He has different values. These are the people that have been cultivated by that crazy speak within the Republican Congress. And now that they've created this, this Frankenstein in the form of Donald Trump, uh, if I can mix my metaphors, I don't know if they can get the genie back in the bottle. I don't know what's going to happen to the Trump campaign. And I say that because... I've been wrong every step of the way. Every, after every Donald Trump gaffe, I assumed that that was the end of his campaign. But he's the only presidential candidate I've ever seen for whom gaffes make him stronger. I mean, it's an amazing, amazing phenomenon. 
Now, unlike many of my democratic uh, uh, progressive brethren who are enjoying the Trump phenomenon, uh, I find it deeply disturbing. Uh, I find the sort of the know-nothing anti-intellectual tone of the Trump campaign to be deeply disturbing. And I find it troubling that um, one of the two major parties in America has descended to this level. You know, people talk about how Republicans need to confront Trump. They need to stand up to him. They need to call him on his nonsensical utterances. But I think at this point it makes no difference. When that happens, Trump is merely perceived as being more victimized. And, you know, it shouldn't be lost in this discussion that when Eric Erickson disinvited Trump to the red state gathering in Atlanta, he was flooded with emails, uh, leading him to conclude that Trump had given out his email address so that people could attack Eric Erickson. I'm, I'm sure that's probably the case. But I, and I also take Eric Erickson at his word that a large number of the emails that he got made references to Obama with the N-word and Megyn Kelly with the C-word. That's where these people are coming from. This is a vile, hateful segment of the Republican electorate. I mean, after all, what did Barack Obama have to do with the Megyn Kelly affair? This is Donald Trump stepping in it. Barack Obama had nothing to do with that. So within the Republican Party, there is an ongoing brush fire occurring, which is threatening to become a major conflagration. I'm not sure that they're going to be able to get a handle on this thing, but we'll just have to watch and see. I'm Jeff Rowan. Thanks for watching.